logic and cheese. Welcome back to the next video in the Mage series, construction. I already explained in the design video that changes were being thought of and implemented. You're going to see some of those tonight. So let's get stuck straight in. The most basic initial design was to have a box with two arms stretching forward with a taut string across the field of view of the camera. That was quickly changed to a wedge shape. This both saved weight because of the size of the box, but also splayed out the arms, keeping them out of the field of view of the camera. So step one is to start construction of the wedge shaped box. Using tape lines and placing the camera in its position on the front face of Mage, we're able to check to make sure that the arms are not in view of the camera. Having confirmed this, we know that the dimensions and sizes of Mage are going to be okay, so we can actually start building it. The construction is from a lightweight and strong foam. The foam itself will help insulate all the equipment that's inside. The reason we want it as light as possible, of course, is so that we can go as high up as possible. A special glue is selected that won't dissolve the foam and yet will maintain its strength when it's down to minus 40, 50, even minus 60 degrees centigrade. Construction continues until we have the main payload box complete. The lid is double skinned for two reasons. One, so that the inner lip fits inside the top of mage for security. The second is for additional strength the reason behind that will become apparent very shortly. So let's have a quick look around the completed payload box with mock-up positions for items of equipment. On this side is the all-important Mission Above Globe Earth logo. This was filmed a little while back. On the other side will be logos for the very kind sponsors of Mage. Mr Sensible is proud that Mage, the Mission Above Globe Earth, has been sponsored by Bob the Science Guy and his channel Common Sense Science. I'm also proud that Mage is sponsored by Arctic Haze and his Climate Anomaly website. Thank you both very much. Carrying on, and at the narrow end of the wedge-shaped payload of Mage will be a standard action camera. This will have a wide-angle lens. We'll get a good view, but of course we will get distortion. This one is not being used for the actual flat earth experiment. Next, we have the first big change to the Mage probe, a third camera. This camera is pointing upwards, so we'll be able to see the balloon throughout the entire flight and see how it expands from its one to one and a half meters down at ground level to approximately nine, nine and a half meters when it's at full height. And hopefully we'll catch a nice burst as well. This will show how the pressure drops as the journey proceeds. We may even be able to do some rough calculations as to the air pressure based on the amount of gas that was in the balloon to start with and the size it expands to. Across the lid of Mage we have another improvement, a GPS antenna. Now the original GPS tracking unit had its own built-in antenna but with three cameras we're going to start to get electrical interference. So this is a sensitive aerial that's kept as far away from the cameras as is possible. This is the additional reason that the lid is double skinned because of the weight of the equipment, camera and GPS antenna that is on top of it. And finally to the business end of Mage. This is where the non-distorting action camera will go with its 90 degree field of view lens. And across its field of view will be the taut reference line. Well, actually, there'll now be two. Another improvement. I'll talk about that in a moment. The next step is the test fitting of all the equipment. So here's our wide angled lens camera that will give us the great shots, although we're gonna get distortion. At the top, we've got our upward facing balloon cam. Here's the balloon cam again, and a shot showing the GPS antenna. And at the front, the camera for the Flat Earth experiment, the GitHub Git2P90. This is still the camera we're planning to use, but in the launch and experiment video, 
links to the actual camera and its specifications will be provided. Now as the lid is lifted, you can get a better idea of the scale of MAGE. You can see the balloon camera and the GPS antenna as well as the rear of the wide-angled lens camera. Looking in the other direction, you can see the rear of the main experimental narrow lens camera and the cabling that leads from the GPS antenna down to the main tracking unit. Yes, I said the main one. Apart from all the things that can go wrong I mentioned previously, like not achieving the height we want or batteries running out, the most important thing is for us to be able to track MAGE. We have two tracking units, the main one that's inside MAGE and a secondary backup tracker that is going to dangle a distance below MAGE. The secondary tracker is also encased in foam to try and keep it as warm as possible. And just for fun, why not make it a nice cheesy wedge shape? Well, it would be rude not to, wouldn't it? I've been massively supported in this project by a guy who wishes to remain anonymous, Q. Not only has Q given me technical support and advice, he's also loaned me a lot of this equipment. He is an experienced high altitude balloonist. He will be helping me with the launch and tracking of MAGE. But more than that, Q came up with a bright idea. My original thought was to have a line tight across the field of view of the camera to show that the image was not distorted. Q suggested having two lines so that we'll end up with one that's above the horizon and one that's below. We'll make the line that's above the horizon bright yellow so that it shows up very well against the dark sky and the line that's below the horizon will make a dark colour line so it shows up against the clouds. This also doubles our chances of having the line visible on any screen captured image so that we can check for the lack of distortion. Instead of having two single arms stuck out from the side of MAGE, we now have a cage. This also helps maintain the rigidity of the arms because now we have two spring-loaded lines strung across the field of view. Now we've made a number of changes to MAGE here. We've added a third camera and therefore a third battery pack. We've added a second tracker unit. We've added a GPS antenna. We've also added more woodwork to enable us to have the reference frame strings taut. It presents a new problem. Too much weight. The balloon chosen, the amount of gas required and the size of parachute needed were all based on a payload weight of around 500 grams. We're now up to an estimated 869. This means we're not going to get so high. I was beginning to wonder if this just will not do Mr. Sensible. If you are going to do this, then you really need to go for it. Quite right, Professor. We should go for it. I have had amazing support for the MAGE project. So we're going to have a larger parachute to cope with a greater weight. We are going to have a larger balloon to enable it to lift that weight and more gas. What's more, I've changed the target. The initial target was 30 kilometers high, about 18.6 miles. We're now aiming for 39 kilometers, which is 24.2 miles, the same height that Felix Baumgartner went to. So I hope this makes you even more excited. 39 kilometers. So big thanks to all the support I've had from everybody, from Super Chats, members, patrons, my sponsors, Bob the Science Guy and Arctic Haze and Q Anon for all your help. I'm really, really looking forward to this. Keep watching the Mage series, so make sure you're subscribed and hit notify. See you all again soon and stay sensible. Many thanks to all my patrons, including new patrons Loretta Carroll, Steve Ireson, Flint, Tati Bogle, Watto and Elizabeth Sagan, and my latest patrons Michael Burnham, Brian Ramsey, Sharpworks, XPenguin95, Stephen York, Yui Closer and Wee Scott's Dog. Thank you all so very much. Shut up and sit down.